Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Columbus This Week with Trevor and Eric, bringing you all the latest, greatest news, events, stories, and uh, other relevant information that impacts your life either here in Columbus or in Sweden, where apparently we have like 30 listeners. So, well, you or 30 mean, downloads? Yeah, is that? 30, 30 listens, so probably like one person. Yeah, so there's uh, some random guy or a girl. It could be a girl listening to us in Sweden. So, all right. Well, all right. So, have, the, any, uh, have anything to follow up on today, Eric? Um, the Olympics are happening. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Who are you rooting for? Um, I'm rooting. For, I'm rooting for Korea. Really? Both combined. Oh, you the mean one the, Korea. the combined Korea? <laughs> okay. Well, who who decided that that was going to happen? Uh, the North and South. They were like, "Hey, we're both going to do this." So Kim Jong Un signed on to that. Yeah. Yeah. He like he was like proposing that they do that. So apparently, some lady, um, like she was like a BBC broadcaster, and when she was reporting on it, she was just like visibly furious. When, when, like, Korea came up. I don't know yeah. why. Well, good. Well, the thing is, like, so Korea, like, well, the North, they do all these, they have all these antics, kill people, you know, they have gulags, etc. And then, oh, hey, it's the Olympics. Like, let's be best buds now. And it's really annoying. I, I like, if you're, if, if you're Kim Jong, like, he should just go to the table and be like, hey, look, like, let's reunify and then just let me have my money and then let me go away. Like that's what I would do if I was him, because he's so deep and so deep into this that like that's to me that seems like the best outcome for him. But I mean, I will say he's um, he's certainly running his little regime a lot better um, from a humanitarian perspective than his father did. Like Perhaps, that's that's yeah. not uh, that's not a high bar, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're talking about going from like you know generations of families being put in work camps and killed to like individuals being put in work camps and killed. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is. I mean, it is better, but yeah. But so, so I yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's still it's still objectively a terrible, terrible country. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. So um, going yeah, you know, going off the the back. Well, following up with that, I should say, I guess. Um, so construction roundup. You ready to hear what's uh what's going on? Um, sure. Okay. I I was actually downtown and saw like. I, so so I took an Uber and probably saw like six cranes on my way to the uh, the sheriff's department. Yeah, you were going down there to get arrested. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first the first construction roundup story I have is um, there's a five story fifteen million dollar building that got approved, which is you know interesting. What's uh, the building? Like what so does it do? it's apartments and a restaurant, and okay. then apparently a bunch of parking spaces. Apparently, two hundred and sixty parking spaces, Good. and a restaurant, and sixteen parking. apartments. So, yeah, I mean, people are complaining that the short north doesn't have a lot of parking, but I've never had a problem parking there. Well, yeah, you just park outside of the short north and walk. Yeah, which you know, fat lazy Americans don't want to do apparently. So, um, so there, that's you know, so that got approved, and then another, th- well, all the rest of these are already buildings that are in progress, but um. There are five different buildings in the university district that are supposed to be open this summer. So uh, the names of them, uh, one of them is Uncommon Columbus, which is 154 units and 188 space garage. And they're, um, the, uh, so they start, so, so this, I think this might be uh, interesting to discuss. So for, at least for Uncommon Columbus, but this is a theme for the rest of them as well. Um, the furnished apartments range, and I'm you know quoting uh, Columbus Underground here. The furnished apartments range from a 414 square foot studio for $1,100 a month to a four bedroom suite for $4,200 a month. So is this for college kids? Apparently, uh, I'm thinking these for like rich college kids or rich you know uh, foreign college kids because there's you know like those kids that are driving the Maseratis oh, around yeah, and I stuff. Know. It's for them probably, which I'm fine with. I, I you know if if people can afford to pay that because you know quote, i'm doing air quotes here normal people can't simply just can't afford those rents but if there are rich people who can come in and like pay those rents and then i don't know i mean that's fine it's just more money coming into the the columbus economy well the problem you have with that is it's going to drive up rent prices elsewhere uh, i mean it kind of could but once i mean the thing is like once you if you keep adding capacity at some point there should be a price equilibrium like it should lower prices if you keep adding supply but well, yeah. I mean, the the other thing that I mean, these are also like right on campus too. So. I mean, I guess it, it won't make that big of an effect because I just remembered that um, um, freshmen. That I'm always. You remember that I'm always right. No, freshmen. <laughs> I think freshmen and sophomores now have to live on campus, right? 
I'm pretty sure that's the case. It's 100% true for freshmen, but I think it's also the case for sophomores. Yeah, I think, and they can't have cars. I think it was a recent change. Um, that no, I, I, uh, no, 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 the, the sophomores thing. Oh, maybe, yeah, um, which is which, which is good. Because I remember hearing about it like being an issue when I was when I started going to school. Yeah. Or, sorry, was in school. Yeah. So it hasn't been that long. So um, there is, all right, so the other four, uh, one is called the Lux Bell, six stories, 95 units, um, the Wellington, 170 units, and Wilson Place, which is 70 units, and also 150 space parking garage. But, um, dude, oh my God, the rent for these are crazy. So, I mean, admitted, admittedly, they are meant to be like split, but for the Wilson Place, it's uh, so it's it's also at the corner of Lane and High, you know. So that's obviously going to be an insanely high rent. Oh, so that's what that that construction has been forever there. Yeah. So the, all that construction is well, not all of it, but a lot of it's like these places, but um. So for for the Wilson place, uh, they have two and three bedroom apartments, quoting uh, Columbus Underground, uh, ranging from seven hundred seventy five to twelve hundred square feet. The seven hundred seventy five unit or uh, square square foot units. Guess what they start at? Um, I'm gonna guess around twelve. <laughs> Double it. Really? Twenty four hundred dollars for a seven hundred seventy five square foot apartment. Campus sucks. Don't yeah. live there. Well, you can live there. You just don't live in these places and then uh well unless you can afford it because you're filthy rich and you just don't care and then uh the last one was the point which is uh 43 43 furnished apartments and they haven't announced pricing yet i guess so yeah so that was uh that's all i had for the construction but pretty interesting i think so yep i i'm, I'm inclined to agree so moving on to the two minute tape so there was uh there was a lot of hubbub a couple of weeks ago about a hubbub yeah <laughs> you got a i don't think i've ever heard you say that uh okay yeah sorry so very, very, let's, very... can we add that to the two minutes of hate is like trevor saying the word hubbub <laughs> oh, anyway. okay all right so um a couple of weeks ago there was a lot of press around this young girl who um who by herself built a uh, a crypto price tracker okay but it turns out that she uh she didn't do that actually what did she do then trevor <laughs> um so long story short she basically gave one of her classmates a blowjob um <laughs> And and in exchange, took credit for for building oh this, this Bitcoin tracking app. So how did it, how did do you know how it like got discovered? Um, did he just like later be like, yeah, I built that? Or I don't actually uh, know. I do know that there's like a Reddit thread where like the girl showed up and was defending herself. There was okay, so there was an article that. Uh, whoa, it's 404 now. Uh, GitHub took got, it down. Oh wow! So we're we're bringing people news hot off the press. So yeah. Well, hot off the press like two days ago. You mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just I just wanted to discuss that story. So uh, one of the comments around the story, which I thought was really funny, was somebody was just like, "Man, I wish I could just like blow my way through life. <laughs> just take credit for like things other people had built and just give them blowjobs in exchange." Yeah. Just be like, yeah, you could get rich that way, probably. Um, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> All right, and then next up, you want to talk about Apple. Yeah, so I do have a, you know, I do have a, I have a gripe with Apple right now. So as you should, as I shouldn't normally, <laughs> but uh, so Trevor, you, are you? Well, we talked about it, but um, so there's a thing called Apple Care, and so Apple basically sells you an extended warranty on um, on your laptop or whatever, and or you know your phone and all this stuff, like all whatever devices they'll sell you. Like an it's adi- the it's the same nonsense that Best Buy tries to sell you, but like for Apple. Yeah, I don't know. It's not quite as bad, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's an extended warranty. That's what. Yeah, yeah that's what they do. So, um, previ- All right. So previously, if you bought, like, let's say you bought a Mac, as everybody should, and then you wanted to buy Apple Care, you could buy it any time within like the first year of like having your Mac. So it's because whenever you buy, you know, you buy computer hardware, it has a one year warranty. So. Their thought process was, well, you can buy it whenever you want because it ex- even if you buy it like the same day you buy your Mac, you still get like three years added to um, to the warranty like after the first year. So no matter what, it's like four years worth of warranty. So there are people like me who would wait until like the last day or like the last week or something like that and then buy it because maybe I just bought a computer. I also I like I don't have the cash on hand to also you know pay for this extended warranty, but. I would want it because, you know, replacing, you know, like, let's say there's something, you know, parts fail, things happen. So maybe you want to, you know, save yourself some, you know, you're taking the gamble that something will break or whatever. That's the whole point of a warranty. Well, apparently now 
if you don't buy it within, I think the, the first 30 or 60 days, like you can't buy it anymore. Like what the heck? What's the point of that? All they did was lose money from me. No, for you, yeah, but maybe maybe they find it's more expensive than than doing it this way. Maybe they're real. The real. Well, yeah, I'm sure like, they're like saving money, but it it sucks for you. Yeah. So that was my. Uh, I was annoyed with that. All right. Next up in uh, two minutes, eight. Um, <laughs> Canadian PM Justin Trudeau um, faces PC backlash over people kind comment. This is coming from B- BBC News. So essentially, Justin Trudeau interrupted some some woman who had said mankind while asking him a question and and said um, it's it's people kind kind of thing. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Critics have accused the prime minister of mansplaining, virtue signaling, and making up words. Yeah, which is exactly what he did. But his spokesman said that Mr. Trudeau was a proud feminist whose policies reflect commitments to equality. Here's the real problem I have, and it, and it's not related to like virtue signaling or whatever. He said he said people kind. Yeah, there's like, already it, a word for that. Yeah, if you want to if you want to use like a gender neutral word, you say human kind, not people. No, but kind. has man in it, so. It's human. It should be Hugh woman man, Hugh Hugh woman kind, Hugh, Hugh person kind. Yeah, that's that's what he really should have said here. <laughs> yeah, that's really stupid. Oh man, but that's the world we live in now, where you know, yeah, it, it's it's just like you have. I think you just have better things to do. Like yeah. if you, I mean, I you know, I support um, pay equality, for example. I'm going to talk about pay equality, maybe, and like that kind of stuff. And what we actually, um, for our list, you know, for our listeners, we're actually going to talk about that a little bit later. We have some, a couple interesting stories, but I'm not going to like lose sleep over humankind or like mankind or something like who cares? Like, it's just, it's just a word. It doesn't, it has no, like, but you, you know what the real problem is in, in, in today's society? What? It's that we call manhole covers, manhole covers. And not, I want to like, start calling them woman hole covers. Well, what about, what about like person hole cover? Yeah. That'd be even better. Like, Oh yeah, like watch out that person hole covers open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do, why do they have to cover men? Yeah, what the heck? Anyways, um, <laughs> That's funny. Enough, enough of that nonsense. Let's move on to Columbus News. Okay. So um the first uh the first story I have for us Trevor is um so Austin's getting the crew, and then Austin is also going to get Amazon. But now we have flights, nonstop flights from uh, Allegiant and Frontier from Columbus to Austin. So as oh, so at, when when we all so when the move. crew moves, like we can also all like buy plane tickets and go with them, and then all move to Austin. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I think we mentioned that this was a possibility a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But um, I mean, it, it's a good it's a good thing to have direct flights to places. Yeah, we no should have direct what. flights to everywhere in America if you really think about it. We should. Yeah. That would be nice. That would, um, well, that wouldn't be that bad of a flight compared. Well, because like right now, most of the time you fly to like Chicago or something or Dallas, and then yeah, I would. Or L- well, when I was making that flight, I'd fly from Columbus to L.A. and then I made it. I made you could do, no, you couldn't do it on. I don't think you could do it nonstop. But anyway, I would fly for, like the other option was like Detroit or Chicago I think or like some you know somewhere else crazy but yeah. I would always try to stop over in LA What's crazy about Detroit and Chicago? I don't know. Or or somewhere else that is crazy maybe. Like I, maybe there's a random flight leaving from like St. Louis or something. I don't know. I'm but sure. um so I'd always do the flight from Columbus and intentionally make sure I had to stop in LA cuz it's like a 4 hour flight to LA and then it's only like f- another 4 or 5 from LA to Honolulu but cuz if you fly from Chicago it's just like a 9 hour flight that you're stuck on there and it sucks. So, so yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. And then, um, so Trevor, last, I think last week I was complaining about the plight of the homeless people being really annoying and, uh, yep, welcome to Columbus this week. We hate the homeless. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but, um, so there was a, uh, there's an article from the dispatch, which is, uh, has the worst website ever. And the police came out pretty much and said that uh panhandling has gotten a lot worse in columbus since uh they stopped enforcing the law so i i don't know what the law was previously do you know do you know i know what the policy was at least as far as the short north is concerned yeah they would essentially pick up the homeless um if they were panhandling if they were soliciting um yeah and they would basically drop them off in in poor areas (laughs) like hilltop seriously yeah so um in uh, it was like last, so like last July or something like that. They had to stop. Well, well, so in tw- like last July, they stopped. There was an article about like they stopped uh, enforcing law. And then in 2015, there was actual a U.S. Supreme Court ruling about um, about like 
so uh, basically the homeless people have like first amendment rights to panhandle i guess wait the homeless have rights yeah apparently what a um, shock yeah and so the aclu as much as i like them i think they're pretty wrong on this but they like supported um supported the panhandlers you know aggressive you know panhandling rights more or less so and since then columbus police have had to follow the law as they should um, and then now they're just sitting there saying, well, told you so. And that's what I'm also telling our listeners, which is told you so. So there are um, 20, there were, uh, so quoting the dispatch, there were 20 cases of aggressive pain handling filed in Columbus in 2016, and apparently only eight in 2017. But each one of those is really, really, uh, is, is, I mean, even one's too many. So, but if you, if you walk up in the short North, it's like pain handlers everywhere. And I, I don't know who the idiots are that keep giving them money. Uh, a lot of people. Yeah. And I don't know. Well, there's just a lot of dumb people. It's probably people from like the suburbs and they just drive in and they're like, I don't know. There's like this p- person. They look really bad. Like maybe I should give them money. You know what the worst part is though? A lot of them are just professional panhandlers. How much money can you really make doing that? Apparently they can make a lot of money. You think? I don't know. I mean, I, a lot of money maybe relative to like working at a restaurant or something. Or like minimum wage. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it wouldn't be that hard to, especially because your money is tax free. So, yeah, <laughs> like at, after taxes, I, that would, oh, we got to figure out a way to tax the homeless <laughs> from panhandling money and like Hash, make, make hashtag that a, has tax the homeless. Yeah, make that a uh, a job. And, you know, it's like a, you're self employed in this job and you have to like pay taxes. And then they'll have like all these back taxes and then maybe they'll stop panhandling. Well, here's the problem: the IRS can't do anything about them. They don't have like a house. They don't have like how are you going to hunt them down? Well, eventually, eventually you can go to jail for like tax evasion. So. Just lock them up, I guess. Do you go to jail for like IRS yeah. person evasion? Well, I no. Like... I mean, they can physically try to avoid the IRS, but the IRS eventually could like catch them. They're like homeless, though. Right, and then like, hey, you owe all this money, and then you're not paying it, and then you go to jail for it. Well, how are they going to catch them? I don't know. The same way they catch other people, people who have houses. You don't have to be in a house to be caught. Like, you don't have to own a home it to be helps. caught. Well, yeah, sure, it helps if you're just hanging out there. The homeless people <laughs> are hanging out in the short north. I guess that's their house. Uh, just <laughs> but, just just go to their place of work <laughs> yeah you just go to their workplace and arrest them but um have you have you seen the uh the panhandlers at um uh what's it called uh at the polaris at kroger no so there's a guy or more more than one person i've, I've seen more than one person but um so if you're leaving kroger to get on sankus like right across like yeah i know the kroger. right there yeah yeah, yeah. So there's um, like a stoplight, and there's like panhandlers that hang out there. But they are 100% professional panhandlers. So dude, don't give them money. Dude, there's also one, um, what do you call it? Like on Bush Boulevard, on the, uh, like always there on the cross cross of Bush and uh, 161. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I swear, they're like, at least, at least in like the nine to five hours. Yeah. I mean, they're there just, that's their job. So, uh, but I do, th- so this is kind of funny on the, like the dispatch website. Um, to go along with their bad website, they have these two stupid pictures. And uh, <laughs> one of them is, uh, so like one of them is just like a homeless guy. Um, just He's just like sitting there and he has a sign. And it's like the caption is, a man asked for money on the southwest corner of Broad and High. And there's just like some other guy in front of it. It's just a stupid looking picture. And then there's another one. And uh, it's in front of Atrium Lofts, which uh, they play really loud classical music, which I always think is funny. But uh, And it's just like a man asks a woman for um you know for money and it's just like some wom- woman walking down the street in a coat and then just some guy just sitting there <laughs> it just they just look really funny to me but they play uh so they play classical music outside to so the homeless people don't like sleep there so what if they like the classical music apparently homeless people can't like classical music well they play, it is really loud and like boisterous like it's like it'd be like lord listening to lord of the rings or something i could probably go to sleep to that no i couldn't really but, yeah but maybe yeah. you're not. You know, maybe you're part homeless. Well, do the homeless sleep there though? I don't know. They could. Maybe they still do. Well, then the music's not effective. Yeah, but I, I don't know, man. I, here's what I know. Here's what I know, Trevor. <laughs> what I know is that the homeless people, well, Columbus has a homeless person pain handling problem, and I think we need to figure out a way to stop it. I don't know a good solution yet. One one solution is not give them any money. Because then it won't work. Another solution is try to get rid of homelessness, question mark. Well, yeah, but that's like, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a big problem. But there was, a, there was also, a, I, I saw this later. There was a huge, uh, like a big Reddit thread about it. 
and people were talking like giving like they were uh they were posting stories about like like times they've run into it and like, did you did you drop stuff. like five stories because you collect you you get out you, you run into homeless people like once a week right no not i don't run into them that often fortunately but <laughs> the only well the only time i had um well i had that one incident that guy tried to follow me but you also had that incident when you were out of state you also oh had, yeah that's true you also had that incident when you were up in colorado no that was the that no was the i'm one. talking about when you were on road trip oh yeah well that was that was because uh devin stole the guy's art so we yeah so we went to this i don't even know where we went we were somewhere in we were in richmond but there was like an artist colony like a homeless artist colony <laughs> and devin like stole this guy's sign or something i don't know i don't remember but anyway the guy was like give me back my sign he wouldn't really it wouldn't didn't, that one doesn't really count but that, um, that that homeless person trying to kill you doesn't count well no he didn't try to kill me speaking of uh speaking of annoying things so so when you go to the airport you know you like check your bags yep and f- out in front there's a thing called sky cap and so they have like a little conveyor belt and you like you go up there and you stay in line you give them your bag and then apparently they, they're like for the airport i guess or whatever but anyway they work on like tips but so basically the idea i guess is like you bring in like your bags and like you don't have to wait in line inside to check your bags or whatever so i didn't realize that you're supposed to tip these guys i thought they just worked for the airport and it's like more convenient like what's the, so here's my thing it's like what's the point in having everybody have to go to like one single line to check their bags and it makes the airport less efficient i just thought they were people there for efficiency like oh hey like you're like a traveler like you travel all the time you know exactly what you're doing like you're just giving these people your checked bags and then like going about your way so that the airport runs better that's what i thought but they're they need like tips and stuff well they they get they get like really mad if you don't give them tips like i've never seen people get this mad about tips and um in denver when we were uh like dropping so we had like our skis and stuff so you go to the sky cap and then there's like a little place to put your bag so i like put my i have a huge ski bag i like put my ski bag on there and then right behind this guy is a conveyor belt and i didn't like tip him because i'm not tipping like all the guy does is he just puts the bag like on the conveyor belt and they're they're making a living wage like they're getting paid so it's not like they're i mean they're not waiters you know so why am i tipping these guys anyway so i like dropped my bag off didn't tip the guy left or whatever and then austin was telling me that uh apparently he was just like really pissed about it and this other the other guy that was there was like hey you gotta like calm down and stuff he like threw my ski bag and like dude there's skis like you're not gonna break them you big idiot so yeah so when you go when you go there if you go to the airport just ignore those people that are out in front of the airport unless you want to tip them or unless you want to deal with them maybe trying to intentionally lose your luggage i was really kind of nervous about that on the way to colorado but on the way back i don't really care because i don't need my skis but yeah i like i like that logic yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i don't care about my bags anymore i already, I already used the, the important thing yeah well i mean if the airport loses them they have to they have to refund me so yeah that's true and I, and I always take i like take pictures of whatever i have in there and then it's like well this is my bag here it is so okay well i think that was that uh that tangent got us off the topic <laughs> of the homeless a little bit all right so well, kind of they act like homeless people so oh the, the, the sky cap people yeah gotcha whatever Okay. Anyway, um, so the next the next story I had was um, so Kroger announced that they're bringing their no cash. Well, have we have we talked about the Amazon like go thing? So you just walk in, grab stuff off the shelf, and walk out. Have we talked about that on the podcast yet? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, this is kind of Kro- I guess Kroger's version of that. So um, they're bringing what they call it is their um, their scan and go sc- scan bag and go. I guess you have all three things that you do in there to remind people. But they're going to bring bring this system to some of their central Ohio stores uh, this March. So that's coming up. And the idea is, so you go into Kroger, you get like a little handheld scanner, you scan stuff like the items that you put in your bag and then you just leave. So I think that's kind of cool because there's no point in like waiting in line, but I'm, I'm a little hesitant on whether it's like actually going to work the way they think it's going to work. What happens but apparently they've been testing it. So so what happens if you want to like put something back? I don't know. I'm I'm sure they've thought like they I'm, I, they have to have like thought of that stuff, but yeah, I don't maybe know. you like scan it and return it. But I don't want to like walk around with a handheld scanner thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it might work for quick trips because I don't want to wait in line if I'm just like grabbing milk or something. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, it's not like the worst idea ever. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I'm you glad know what, you know what is the worst idea ever? Oh well, no. Those, well, yeah, but no. <laughs> those stupid cameras that Target has when you self checkout that are like pointed at you and you're like looking at yourself as you're buying things. Oh yeah, that's really irritating. I didn't. Yeah. Know. I, I haven't been to Target in like a few years, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like any other self-checkout, except they make it very clear that you're, like, being recorded and you're watching yourself. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. All right. Okay. So, next up, we have um, uh, a few flyers have been distributed around the city of Hilliard, <laughs> and uh, and people aren't taking it well. So you well, remember Why when, not? Why not, Trevor? So, you remember when we talked about the whole, like, it's okay to be white? like yeah. troll movement where people were posting flyers all around different campuses yeah. to, to, you know, basically get people. Right. Um, so this is now happening in Hilliard and people are, uh, people are not taking it well. So <laughs> okay. just to, just to reiterate what we said last time this came up, um, the whole idea here is you, you basically, you take this sort of innocuous statement and it's okay to be white, right? That's something that's not that, I mean, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Would you? No, not really. I, I think most people would agree that that's like that's in and of itself the statement is innocuous. Well, I, I think, but most people who aren't crazy would agree with that. I mean, it's just a statement. But but it gets people right because yeah. because it, everybody it triggers want, the people who. Well, everybody wants to see like deeper meaning behind it. Yeah, and and like associate it with with whatever. Yeah. So, anyways, um, these flyers went up and. And the community didn't, didn't take it that well. No, of course not. But, but, I mean, that's the whole point of this movement. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's the statement from the mayor of, uh, the mayor, statement from the mayor and city council of Hilliard. Oh, that's going to be good. Racism and hateful messages of any kind will not be tolerated in our community. The city of Hilliard fully supports racial equality and firmly believes that diversity makes our community better and stronger. <laughs> the hateful propaganda, it's okay to be white was concentrated in a neighborhood <laughs> adjacent to Hilliard, and the matter was investigated by the Columbus Division of Police. Even though these messages were not concentrated in Hilliard, they impact our entire community. Yeah. We want to ensure that each member of our community feels valued, because it's okay to be white makes people feel unvalued. Yeah. Hilliard is... I mean, it, and, it, it, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And will always be a place where everyone is respected and protected. Hate has no place in Hilliard. The Hilliard Division of Police will take strict actions if people are found defacing any personal or public property in Hilliard. Yeah. So I will say that on one hand, people do use those kinds of flyers to try to promote racism. People do do that. That's the thing. But uh, on the other hand, freaking out about it and like just not like what they should do is just take them down and not even like talk about it. Because th that's the only way you defeat this like kind of nonsense. Well, I've I, so I've seen people try to argue that like saying it's OK to be white basically is saying that it's not OK to not be white. Yeah. Which I think is ridiculous. And if you want to make that argument, you also need to make... I mean, then you also need to apply it consistently. Right, but their their whole I, their whole agenda is to not apply it consistently. Well, here's what happens <laughs> it, Well, here's what happens if you apply it consistently. Saying black lives matter means you're saying that only black lives... That, that no non-black lives right, matter, right? Right, right. And, I mean, both, like, both of those statements are literally fine. It's, yeah. it's fine to say black lives matter. It's fine to say it's okay to be white. And right. if you get, like, baited into responding... Right, right. Then, you're, like, you're, that's you're, on you. I mean, you're like an idiot. I, what would we call this? The the like city council and the mayor. Yeah, they like been baited. Yeah, I mean they were they were probably forced to by the community, right? Because there's an outrage. But yeah. like the whole thing is nonsense, right? Like the whole purpose is to bait people into responding and making themselves look dumb. And, and then what happens? They get baited and then they respond and then they look dumb. Yep. And yeah. so here we are. Yeah. So then then they get talked about on our podcast, and then the entire country of Sweden finds out about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean so the on so on one hand there are people who post that stuff with the intention of being racist the statements in and of themselves most likely aren't racist i mean the one we're discussing here definitely isn't neither is black lives matter or any lives matter really so i mean i can see a little bit of the outrage about you know if you assume that the person who put those up was like a big white nationalist like kill everybody who's not a white person like kind of person if you assume that that's the person then you could be outraged because you think that like they're doing that but if you were like if you were that person like this you're this huge neo-nazi person why would you just put like why would you put like just this one little statement why wouldn't you put up like a whole bunch of other bad stuff you know i like, mean yeah it's even, a stupid thing to think even if that's the even if that's the case even if it's like this like neo-nazi group or whatever that's putting them up 
Yeah. Like, let's say it's like Andrew, whatever the hell his name is, the guy who's like yeah. centered in Worthington. Um, so, like, let's say it's him putting up flyers. It still doesn't matter. The statement is still, in and of itself, not a racist statement. Yeah. And also, like, like, just because a person says something doesn't mean that, like, their beliefs are automatically transferred onto the statement. What would be a good example? What if he's like, I don't know, sugar tastes good? Yeah. Like, that's... Do, do, does everybody have to suddenly stop eating sugar because sugar is, like, a, a white nationalist food? Yeah. That would be, that would be a, a fun... Well, not... Fun, th- fun for our podcast to talk about, I guess. But that would be a fun strategy if you're a hate group to start. Um, well, actually, there there was um, they did this and there was a. Uh, so I'll I'll, I'll I'll mention this really quick and it's well here in a second. But it would be really fun if you just start co-opting like really popular stuff that like it, like it's just completely like innocent or something like make kittens like the symbol of white nationalists or I f- something. I feel like that's actually happening right now. I don't know if you know about the whole like soy boy insult. <laughs> no what is that so essentially like a bunch of right-wing people <laughs> currently it's just in vogue to call people you don't agree with who are like you know effeminate left-wing oh people yeah or whatever. Call them, like soy boy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Be- I mean, because soy is associated with like higher levels of estrogen yeah which is nonsense um, so so like okay if you're so like if you're uh i mean if you're right-wing now like you like a lot of people just are unironically just avoiding soy because they don't want to be soy boys. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if on the left, you know, people were like, I, d- I don't care. I'm going to eat more soy now just yeah. to, just to show you. Yeah. But see if they're smart, they would do it for like, I don't know, Instagram or something and like try to turn Instagram into like a white nationalist or whatever. It doesn't have to be white nationalist, but any sort of nationalist, like, Oh, like, they'd be like, Oh, Hey, like follow us on it. Like put up a whole bunch of racist or sex or whatever, like, d- um, discriminatory things and put like follow us on instagram and then turn instagram that's how we can beat well, facebook trevor so okay so this is this is <laughs> but it's, oh it's, yeah well, really quick so there was um i i did read an article and i'm pretty sure we didn't talk about it but um there is a so the nor since it's the olympics the norwegian um downhill skiing team i think it might be a different sport definitely norway their sweaters had these like runes like norwegian yeah. runes or whatever and um apparently the sweater like one one of the runes got like popular with white nationalists and so sweden was like yeah like or norway was like yeah you can't like oh uh, they didn't tell people they couldn't wear the sweaters but like it was kind of like hey don't wear those anymore and like the company that made them can't sell them anymore and all this stuff because all the, like they made it's a norwegian thing it means like some i don't know what it means but it means something right and it's like part of their culture, part of their country, part of their history, part of like, you know, it's everything that's it's yeah, part of Norway. Just, just got to throw it away now. Yeah. And so like now it's like, oh, you can't wear these sweaters because like some white nationalists like thought the rune looked cool. And then they put it on like their white nationalists, you know, like propaganda or whatever. Yeah. And it's like now the, you know, the ski, the downhill skiing team is like, oh, you can't wear that anymore. It's like, what, what the heck? Like, that's exactly what they want. So speaking of but of anyway. co-opting things, actually, you know the Black Panther movie is is set to come out, right? And it's been reviewed a lot. Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I think I think a but lot I don't of like superhero movies. So I'm... yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna watch it. I haven't watched a superhero movie since I think like the Spider Man movies. Yeah, I did watch the Dark Knight. That was a good oh, movie. I, okay. I did yeah. watch the Dark Knight series. I take that back. Yeah. Okay, so um, the the alt right is actually sort of trying to co-opt the black panther movie which is <laughs> which is kind of ironic because it's almost all black actors right yeah but here's the thing um so if you read the comics the the state of wakanda is basically like this authoritarian um yeah like essentially ethno state with only you know native wakandans which are which are african yeah like are allowed in and you know they're like super advanced <laughs> yeah, and stuff and, this they, is going. and they have a wall around their entire oh, country oh that's so funny <laughs> Oh yeah, and and so they're like they're like actively trying to promote the movie, but they're trying to co-opt it because ultimately, you know, the alt right—that's con- what they want for like white people. Yeah, they're you know the, generally they're fine with you know an ethno state that has a wall that doesn't allow immigration, etc. Yeah, they look. They, I, I think um, people who tend you know who fall in that that camp, they're not even opposed to um, like other culture. Like like let's let's say they're anti uh, like they don't like black people for, as just as an example. I mean, I think they don't, but. Um, like they're not even opposed to like black people having their own like yeah their own I mean, eth- yeah they, own they want state. they just want separation of uh, and I don't mean like oh they just want this I don't mean that in that way but like they want you know separation of eth- ethnicities and and what have you and, like being with your own kind yeah so but, I mean so they, they, it's they, funny because it kind of gives them justification this so. is this is a very interesting uh, interesting thing because yeah. you yeah you you essentially have this movie that on one hand is being like yeah. praised for being like hashtag woke. 
yeah. all over on the left. And then on the right, they love it because, you know, yeah. it, it appeals to the authoritarian wall building, yeah. keep the immigrants out kind of. So it's either really genius because they're getting everybody to like the movie or it's really um, or it's really stupid because people who are pro like not pro the movie, but pro like the idea of like this ethno state who are not like, you know, white supremacists or something, but they're still like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. They don't like they don't realize that that's exactly what, you know, what they're fighting against. So, yeah, yeah who knows? that's funny. Anyway, good tangent. We were talking. What were we talking? Oh no, we were talking. I was thinking we were, we were talking, talking about the Kroger article, and then like we got on that tangent. But no, we no. were talking <laughs> about the uh, the it's okay to be white flyers. It's yeah. okay to be Wakandan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, you should print those out and put them everywhere. Oh God. Um, yeah. you you make news? I don't even news. know what the response would be to that. I, it's a good, interesting experiment. I bet bad though. So last up for Columbus News, a Democratic group backed by former President Barack Obama said this week it plans to invest millions of dollars in state-level elections in 11 different states this year with heaviest focus on Ohio. Which sounds like a very good plan if you're the Democrats. Yeah. So in a, uh, I mean, it's the, the reason they're focusing on Ohio is it's a perennial political battleground. As we know, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's the it's like one of the like, what five states where your vote actually matters. Yeah. Well, and, I think all votes matter, but I mean, you know what I mean. So so they're dropping mega money in Ohio, and they're also vying for the most offices here. And so obviously they're vying for the governor position. Yep, Kasich stepping down. So they actually have a chance. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. But they're cause... also but they're also going for auditor, secretary of state, um, oh, one of the Ohio Senate seats, and one of the Ohio House seats. Yeah. Oh, quickly before I forget, um, I did, I wanted to bring this up, but I forgot. Um, I, well, I forgot about it until just now. Apparently, um, the Ohio House um, bipartisanly agreed to put an end to gerrymandering because, like, right now, whoever's in control can like re redraw yeah, the yeah, control. I'm so apparently, there's a bipartisan bill that has passed. I think has passed the House, or is like at least has strong support on both sides to stop that. So that's kind of that's kind of uplifting news. I I would care if I knew what they meant by ending gerrymandering. Like I, I yeah. Let me um while while you're going over this story, let me see if I can find the uh, find the article really quick. Sure. So essentially, for this uh, for this story, like the the big push is to essentially money bomb. The, the state of Ohio in order to try and take these these five key positions to try yeah. and maintain a strong, uh, I guess, a strong position in the in the state of Ohio. So one of the reasons I think this is this is good coming from the Democrats is because in 2016, they basically ignored Ohio, at least in the national. Yeah, level. which was stupid. And and the the results are Ohio went really red. Um, Ohio Senate became even more red. Ohio. Uh, yeah. House, I think, stayed just about or became slightly more red it just wasn't i mean it, like it was it was a huge victory yeah. in ohio for the i think it, the the what's funny about the democrats is they're supposed to be the party of the people and you know i i'm saying this as somebody who would typically vote democrat they're supposed to be like the party of the people but what they became is the party of the left and the left and right coast you know those people yeah um, the, the party of the coast yeah so it became the par the party of california oregon washington New York, well, the whole Northeast, yeah. New York, and like Maryland, maybe or something like that, mostly. Yeah. Um, and then you know, of course, like Michigan's typically blue and stuff like that. So if you you ignore all the states in the middle, and it's like then you lose elections. You're like, oh, why do we lose these elections? It's like, well, stop being idiots and like actually start being the party of the people. And you know, that's what you're supposed to do. But right? Eric, all the people are on the coast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are more people on the coast. Yeah, but it's like. There's also states. So um, to answer your, your original question, so I pulled up the, the article, and we'll have this in the show notes. The uh, So uh, both near-unanimous support from both, uh, and I'm quoting the Atlantic here, um, with, ne with near-unanimous support from both Republicans and Democrats, the chamber approved Senate Resolution 5, a measure that would for the first time require bipartisan input and approval for federal congressional maps. The measure is expected to pass the, ha pass the, house, the state house today and will appear on the ballot in the May primary elections to get final approval from voters. So, I mean, there's a little bit of ambiguity in what they mean by input and approval, but I'm pretty sure they're actually, I'm trying to be optimistic and, and hope that they're actually trying to. Um, like, here's here's what yeah. I'm thinking as far as bipartisan approval. This doesn't mean gerrymandering ends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't what, mean it what, completely ends, but. What this actually means is people in safe seats are now going to be colluding together to maintain their seats. Um, yeah. So it becomes less of a party thing, and it becomes more of an established politician thing. Yeah. Is is that better? 
Well, let me. Um, so I'll, I'll go on with uh, with with some of the, with you know, with more of the article. So again, quoting the Atlantic. So uh, the proposal would require three fifths support of the entire legislature to pass a map for use over a ten year period. The three fifths must include fifty percent of all members of the minority party. The resolution also sets forth a maximum number of counties that can be split by congressional districts, a provision that should affect district compactness. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is that impressive. Hearing about it, okay. So let's assume that your minority party, um, minority is split forty sixty, right? Majority is sixty. Sure, because that's what our Senate is. So the numbers are easy. Yeah. Um, that means you have to, in the case of the Republicans, uh, they would have to get twenty Democrats on board. Yeah. You secure twenty Democrat positions, and you're still free to gerrymander the map as much as you want. And yeah, let, let's be honest, politicians are not going to. Like, if you secure their seat for the next election, why why would they, like, not vote for you? Well, the Republicans can't really secure a Democrat seat. What so do like, you mean? Like, I mean, let's say, um, I mean, if, if, if you have those, those 20 people and the, the Democratic Party is like, hey, like, we don't want this. And then those 20 people are like, well, we're going to vote for it because the Republicans, for whatever reason, co-opted us into doing it. Well, Democrats will say, well, we'll just run somebody against you next year and you won't get any support. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the carrot stick there. I, I I, I don't. I'm not saying it's like a perfect solution or anything like that. I'm just saying it's you know it seems like a positive thing versus where we currently were. Yeah, I mean, I I just don't think it, you're going to see that big a change because I mean maybe people not. can still be know. properly incentivized. I mean they can be, but you know again there's you know possible backlash for where you know for doing that. So also every time the Democratic Party tries to spurn people who have turned against them, it ends up crushing them. Like, that's why Congress looks the way it does right now, because the, the Democrats decided to, to get rid of the Blue Dogs after, after what, 2009? Yeah. It's just, it's not, it's not a good long-term strategy. Yeah. I don't know. But that's all, I think that's all we have for Columbus, Ohio, et cetera, news. Yeah, but it was, uh, you know, pretty interesting stuff. So, move on to, uh, you ready to move on? Yep, I'm ready to move on to debate and discussion. Okay. Okay, so first up in debate and discussion, Eric, we have some news coming from Standard, which is a, publica- a fashion publication in um, the, UK. the UK. Yes. Yeah. So, well, we did promise our listeners that we would get into this. So, what? Oh, yes. So, um, essentially, um, there's there's been a study done that shows, or I mean, I guess I guess there's been there's been some research done that shows that there's a pay gap in the modeling industry between men and women okay and it's not small it so the numbers vary a lot but it's anywhere between like men make 10 to 25 percent of what women do in the wow. mod, in modeling so it's kind of significant you yeah know? i would agree so men make a quarter to a or a tenth to a quarter of what women do so yeah. how do you feel about that well i mean um if our goals are to have uh, equal pay for equal work I don't see why men are paid paid less than women in this case. No, I. So I I take the completely opposite view. Like, so I mean, I don't actually have a problem with it. Just like I don't have a problem with you know Tom Brady making a billion dollars and then or that's not a good example because there's no female. Well, there's no actual female. But it, like I have no I have no problem with like LeBron James making a trillion dollars a year and then you know the biggest star in women's you know with the women WNBA making like you know not you know not that much money you know relatively speaking i mean i don't have a problem with that but yeah that's, you know, that's I mean, pretty much you, where, yeah. where i line because like the work so the work that the men do or does do men the men do yeah okay that's the work weird. that the men do yeah <laughs> English um, is hard. <laughs> yeah i know um so the work the work they do is is worth less than what the women at what the women do because women first of all women buy more clothes women buy more expensive clothes yeah which we'll Um, also talk about later actually so all this it all fits together it all fits together and advertising it as advertising is typically viewed more by women and i mean i think women just have a higher interest in clothes and there's more competition there's a there's a number of reasons that that women get paid more than men here yeah and i think that's fine but i also think that it's ridiculous when you have like i don't know female soccer teams complaining that they make like one fiftieth of what the male soccer teams do. I don't think they make that much less. But are you serious? Like it's not one fiftieth. Like, like FIFA teams, 
Oh yeah, but I mean, I was th- I guess I was thinking of uh, the because the, the recent backlash was like the the U.S. teams, like the actual oh, official country. Yeah. But yeah, I see what you're saying. But yeah, I mean, the the and I'll we'll, we'll talk about this in the other um, the other article we have that's part of this. But the the problem is for some reason people think that pay must be equal no matter what, and it's it's not. That's just not the case. Pay should be equal for equal work. Right, and so in this case, we've I think we've demonstrated, and we both agree, um, the 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 work that men provide in the fashion industry is of less is it's less work it's and it's less, less valuable. Well, it might not be like less work on a person to person basis, but it's less valuable work. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the same. It's the same thing as hiring somebody who has let's say thirty years of like coding. Let's I'm just making something up, but has thirty years of uh, of coding experience, and somebody who has like two. Like you pay the person with more experience, you provide ideally um, provides more value than you do of somebody who doesn't have as much experience and can, can't provide yeah, I w- as much I w- value. I wouldn't say equal pay for equal work. I'd say equal pay for equal value, more or less. Like yeah. if if you're gonna make an equality argument, value is what actually matters. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I think when you say work, I, I, I kind of mean the same because you know if you're like if you if you hire let's say you hire somebody into like an entry level position for example and you have somebody who has well maybe they spent five years in high school i don't know i'm just you know again making up an example they spent five years of in high school writing code and then you know this other person they hire um regardless of gender race or sexual orientation or whatever they have like maybe one year like you should pay if unless you're you know if you're a company like there's no problem with paying somebody who in that same position more money when they have better experience and can provide better output yeah they're they're essentially more valuable I yeah think. so um go, going on with this uh unless you ha- had something else you wanted to add no i think okay. i think that's about it yeah um so going on with this there was a really good podcast ep- episode by freakonomics and one of them uh the, this podcast was about um uber so i mean everybody knows what uber is um shouldn't even i mean i guess that goes without saying but um there was a there was a pretty big study uh, with and Uber was involved in this and also like Stanford and um, you know some other big you know big name institutions like the University of Chicago and and all this stuff and uh, so what they did was they got a, a data from over a million rideshare drivers from Uber right so they had you know demographic information they had like you know which cities everybody was was driving in and all this stuff. And they found the, so the long story short, and you, you, you know, if you're interested in this topic, you should listen to this podcast. Cause um, well, Freakonomics is good in general, but uh, this episode is pretty, I think it's pretty fascinating. But so after, a, you know, they, they end up picking like just one city and they picked Chicago and to like do a study. And then they've also done studies and, you know, other various studies, but this was like the, the main one. And so they wanted to analyze, well, you know, maybe they could find a source of, like why men or women make more money. Um, and you know, this is like a, a case study. So I, I, with Uber, you know, it's the algorithm they use is gender blind. Um, you're one of the complaints that women typically have for not having as much, uh, not making as much money is that they have other, like they need flexible hours, which I think everybody needs flexible hours. So I don't really see, you know, whatever I'll, I'll save that for later. But so ideally like this has more flexible hours, you know, to use the app, the the pay algorithm is simply based on the number of miles you you know it's just whatever it's the miles you drive and then you know congestion pricing and all that stuff yeah right? whatever the search so it's is. it's um object it's almost objectively it's I'll go ahead and say it, it's objectively gender gender blind and you know keep in mind that people doing this study are men and women it's not just like some old you know guys in like some lofty tower it's like um like rebecca there's a rebecca diamond and you know she's uh she's like from stanford or whatever uh the graduate school of business there. And uh, what they found was that, on average, men make 7% more on Uber than women do. And so the question is, why? And there's no bias. It's not, you know, it's not that, um, you know, I mean, that, I mean, there's nothing there. It's just men make more. And what they found out, in, uh, to, and you should, I mean, people should listen to this, but what they found out, long story short, was that men drive faster and they work more hours. And because they work and because with the, when you take those two things into consideration and then you add that by working more hours and driving faster, maybe not so much driving faster, but by working more hours, they gain more experience. And so then they know where the more higher profit routes are, they end up making more money. And so it turns into, it's just a matter of experience on, on the Uber platform, which I thought was uh, which was a pretty interesting uh, 
conclusion that they found. Well, also, driving faster means you get to destinations faster, meaning yeah. you can take more rides. Like, yeah, that's exactly. Not a, that's they're, not they're, a just, they're frankly, um, and, you know, I don't mean this in like a, you know, anti, but they're just working harder. And that's just, I mean, that's just what it is. So, you know, there are certainly cases where even in, you know, even in this, like, you know, a gen- with a gender blind, women and men can complete compete however they want do whatever they want scenario it you know it turns out at least in this case that men just worked harder and then that explains like this disparity in income but what i took issue was with they were you know at the the end they were kind of talking about like well what can we do to you know maybe we could have higher rates for women you know women drivers or something and i thought that was completely nonsense but well if they do that they're they're going to get a lot of i mean I, I certainly, if I was driving for Uber, I would I would very quickly, you know, decide to transition. Yeah. So, like, I mean, why not? Like, if you're literally just gonna say, "All right, we're gonna pay women more," because yeah, of I don't, this no, I don't disparity. think it's a serious proposal, but they kind of hinted at it, and I was really that kind of put me off because it's like, well, it's a, it's everybody gets to freely compete, you know? It's like, I mean, that's the, the whole point. Like, every, every life isn't fair, right? Like, you don't get to make the same amount of money as everybody else for any reason. Like, you have to put in the work for it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's that's like my personal solution if something like that were to become commonplace. Just be like, oh, yeah, for the purpose of this paperwork, I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I thought that was, uh, you know, that was because that was we were talking about this, that that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So, mm-hmm. um, yep, I'm inclined to agree. Um, so next up, you wanted to uh, you wanted to talk about the Olympics, right? Oh, um, well, I wanted to, I, so there's some rumblings about doing esports in the Olympics and I wanted to get, uh, get your feedback on that. So, oh, so esports in the Olympics. Yeah. yeah I'm in, I'm in, I'm favor in favor of it, of it too. Yeah. yeah. It's already on ESPN. It's basically, a I real mean, thing now. the United Korea would certainly, uh, would, would, would certainly see a couple of medals picked up. True. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the question, real question is what games? What, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I was about to say. So like, would they, you know, I, I, I don't like the idea – well, I guess it's already done with, like, sponsors and stuff, but I kind of don't like the idea of, like, if they pick games, then those games are, like, made by some company. And so now the companies are, like, trying to – you know, because, like, normally, like – so, like, let's say you have, like, the Sprint. I don't know. It's just, like, the Sprint. Like, no company gets to, like, make the Sprint. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, the, the Sprint. So when they start picking the, when the – yeah, when they start <laughs> – uh, well, they could sponsor it, and that's fine. But when they start picking, like, the games, yeah. it's like, well, they're picking, like, StarCraft. Well, one company makes that or, or well, what Well, he, here's the problem. That already happens um, in the Olympics. So with what? Martial arts. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's uh, – this, this, this is a very similar case. Like yeah. – um brazilian jiu-jitsu is not is not in uh is not in like um the the olympics whereas something like boxing is and i think judo also is yeah judo and jiu-jitsu are very are sort of similar um sure there's, there's different focuses but like that's a i mean that's an issue where you have like this bias against against certain martial arts right yeah because like i be, so i actually heard a proposal that that i think is somewhat interesting i want i want your opinion on it okay so the idea is every Olympics we um, we allow the host country to eliminate one um, uh, what do you call like it? one one sport yes and yeah. then add one that sounds cool yeah, yeah I, like I would idea. I would be in favor of that yeah it and changes then, things up a little bit yeah so things slowly change over time without the well, cor- they, they, the they, corruption of the IOC being yeah, involved because they do yeah they change games anyway but it would be nice to see the host country just kind of like pick a couple yeah so it gets like it gets hosted in brazil and suddenly jiu-jitsu is on the yeah yeah i think that'd be kind of cool because then you kind of you know there are certain countries that like certain sports so it, it would yeah. be interesting to see them showcase like it would be a fairer representation of, of sports yeah although there would be some major drama if something that was like considered like a major thing was eliminated like imagine like the dash got got, got like cut like 100 meter yeah. dash so maybe there would be protected but then it gets or like or like swimming yeah, or maybe they could just add one instead of getting rid of one. Yeah, maybe. So, but um, anyway, so I actually I just I saw this really this quote really quick. So they were talk um, there's the article we have. They were talking about um, <clears throat> bring like, uh, you know, for the like the esports athletes and somebody's the the quote was uh, from this is from Wired. It was like, so they're quoting somebody. Um, it was it's no longer Dorito eating, Mountain Dew drinking, lazy people who have nothing else to do but entertain themselves, like playing esports. Yeah, uh, somebody said that. But I think it would be interesting. I don't want to see like another. Sp- it, so some of the games I think would be interesting are like Counter Strike and Starcraft and like you know some of the some of those kind of games. Which I mean, if we go by popularity, like I don't know, I don't know how else you would do it. The problem is if we go by popularity, the number one and number two game 
are like very very similar especially from like a perspective or a spectator perspective yeah because it's like it's law and dota like yeah that's number one number two i think there's like a i i think cs is a distant three yeah but you know you could you could pick like different categories so you'd have like a first person shooting game and maybe like a, a, a fighting game or something oh right. my god imagine the uh the drama over are we choosing hots lol or dota yeah that'd be great people obviously lose their choose, minds obviously you choose league of legends absolutely not it's the best so you choose, choose it but um anyway so let's not get into that <laughs> I, I really don't like dota i just i just don't like it at uh, all. that's but. fine i mean enjoy your enjoy your game that's made for like 10 year olds yeah, it's great. It's it's open and accessible to everybody. Although to be fair, it's not even a, it's not as accessible as as Hots is. Yeah, I I really couldn't get into that either. I thought that was just boring. Huh. Anyways, I think we're off topic. So, anything else on the Olympics? No, that was it. I just uh, wanted to bring that up. But uh, speaking of, well, not really speaking of the Olympics, but so Twitter finally made money. So That's a shock. Well, th- well, think about that though. They finally made money. Like. They have a quarter where they made money. So no, that's, like all that's, this other time, they just, surprising. Haven't, they just haven't been making money. Well, they've blamed every problem under the sun for the fact that they aren't making money. And then they don't do anything about it, or they do things about it, and it gets worse. It's yeah. like, oh, we have all these trolls. This is why our platform's not making money. Let's aggressively try to get rid of them. Oh, no, our qu- our next quarter was worse. Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> all these bots are why we're not making money. Let's try to get rid of the bots, which they didn't actually do. Right. Because the bots make the money. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, then people are complaining about Donald Trump, and it's like, well, Donald Trump makes the money, et cetera. Well, yeah, Donald Trump's never getting removed. No. Like, he's a he's a, he's a cash cow. Yeah. But this this might surprise you, um, or not, because I've already told you this. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, we already, like, talked about it, so I guess I'll, yeah. I can feign surprise. <laughs> so somebody... <laughs> So somebody actually did some uh, some lar- some big data analysis on wow. on ten thousand big data uh, on on ten thousand tweets and use use sentiment analysis to try and determine whether or not they were bots. And the results they got were that ninety nine percent of Twitter posts by volume, not by uh, <laughs> not not by likes or whatever, or sorry, retweets and no, it is likes, um, were uh, were actually posted by bots, huh. which isn't that surprising because like. So yeah. any news organization... It's really like, not surprising since you already told me before the show. Yeah. But. <laughs> so any news organization that's posting stuff, it's pretty much all bots. They're just pulling from a... They have some API feed, right? Yeah. Um, any t- most of the time that we've posted podcast episodes, those have been bot tweets. But it's... it's I, I feel like 99% is still pretty high. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, we were talking about this beforehand, but some of the, some of the bot stuff, the bot posts are fine because... Uh, the example I gave is like if Ohio State has, you know, some message, you know, maybe there's some new article, re- there's some break- breakthrough research they want to publish. They've got like a million different social media accounts, so it doesn't really make sense to have one human go through and like log in and then post the article and then like specially curate it when it's like you can just publish to all and that's all done by bots. So there are, you know, it can be used for good. So when you see bot, you shouldn't immediately think like. Oh man, that's the Russians coming to get me, or or whatever stupid stuff people think. Like there are you know positive use cases for it. It's just when it gets abused is the the real problem. I mean, it, it's the the surprising thing to me is just that the overwhelming ma- majority of tweets are are bot tweets. Yeah, like well, that's I mean, kind of surprising. Yeah, but I mean, if you're doing like you know posting these articles and stuff, like that's I, I, ninety nine seems kind of high, but well, I I'm could saying. see like eighty or seventy five like being very well. Yeah, reasonable. you're talking about three out of four, but like ninety nine out of a hundred. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's. I mean, I guess uh, bots are better at posting than humans. They don't have to like think before they do it. Yeah, they can just and plus they can just do it really fast. They don't. They don't have to like spell check. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I bet a ton of it's spam though. Yeah, because right. then you have like the like. So I have a Twitter account now, but um. You know, which has actually been pretty great. Has has it been uh, too, um, you know, hasn't been too spammy or anything like that. It's better than a news aggregator at least. But the um, oh crap, what was I gonna say? Um, but yeah, like you, so, the, what, I guess what I was gonna say is like I still get once in a while. Like I have my account set to private, so people have to request to follow me or request. I I don't know. Anyway, like people, I get requests like. Hey, like you want to have a good time? Like follow me or like tweet at me or something or private message me or something stupid like that. And it's like obviously it just you know those kind of bot things are annoying and I ignore them. But didn't you tell people to follow you? Not those people. Well, no, but you told people on the podcast. How are they supposed to know that like 
how are they supposed to get accepted by you if they like? I mean, I would just see it, and I can just tell that they're not a, like a spam person. Oh, I see. Because like, I mean, you can like, I would look, I look and like see what they're tweeting, and yeah, you know, I can tell. But if you do follow me, I'm probably not going to follow you, so don't don't be offended by that. So listen to what I say, but I won't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> so because I just use it for news, like I don't want to, I don't want to hear what other people are. I don't, like, I don't saying, want your really. opinion. You yeah, should, you should take my opinion, but I don't want yours. So. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, so you ready to move on to the feature let's now that you insulted everyone? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right, so for our first, uh, well, not our first because we only have one. So for our feature, there was an article from Bloomberg, which is a terrible website, but the article was actually not too bad. Um, so what they were talking about, uh, the, well, the article is called The Death of Clothing, and it's about the apparel industry. So Trevor, as it turns out, Americans are buying less and less apparel and i have uh reasons for that which i'll go into but the um the the main crux of the article is pretty much that prices for clothes clothing has gone down americans are spending a lot less money on clothing and they're spending money on more money on things like experiences and travel which i think is a good thing and uh so what i'll say here is my theory for this partly comes from uh the increase in the casual workplace so you only need to have maintain one set of clothing instead of two or th- three or whatever. Yeah, uh, which yeah makes I, sense. Yeah, which I which is one of the it's like something that I like l- struggle with every day because like I want to it would be cool to like look better at work instead of like looking like a slob like I do, but then I'd have to buy more clothes and then I have to like store them somewhere and I don't want to do any of that. But um, yeah, so that's my, my first one. And then the other one I already mentioned was uh, people are just spending money in better places. And then I also think people, I think the trend of like buy it, like buy it for life, you know, or like buy, if you're going to buy clothes, like buy something that never goes out of style. I think that has, uh, has really caught on. And then the other thing is, so you have the, like these fast fashion companies like H&M. Yeah. So previously, you know, like, I don't know, like you'd get a style from a store, I would think. Yeah. And now you get that same style like h&m can just reproduce any style and so they just reproduce the style and then they just sell it for a lot cheaper and so those companies that were making like a boatload of money like let's say burberry or something which right now just i mean they do make a little bit higher quality clothing i think but like part of the the whole value proposition for buying their clothing is to have the label to say that i can afford to buy this and so that's most really stupid yeah and i think yeah exactly i think americans have realized that because when i was growing up you know something like abercrombie like all these kids like all the kids were wearing like abercrombie so you had to have like the little moose logo if you were a cool kid and i know my parents didn't really buy didn't buy me that i had like one shirt from them so um you know so when i was growing up it's still kind of a thing like you wore like a brand and stuff but people have kind of realized that that's like you know that's stupid and then the other thing is Americans in general, I think, dress um, ju- dress pretty casually. And then you also have to take into account the rise of, like, the lifestyle, um, like, the outdoor lifestyle brands. So people have been buying, like, North Face and Patagonia and, like, all that kind of stuff. And then they keep those. Those are more high-quality items, I think. And then they keep them for longer, and then they don't really go out of style, and they use them for, well, I'm going to work. I'm going to wear this. You know, I bought this nice Patagonia sweater or, you know, or whatever you buy. And I'm gonna wear that to work, but I'm gonna wear that. You can all, you can wear it. You can like dress it up and dress it down, and it's like acceptable in the states. Yeah, I so. I, I wouldn't disagree with any of those. I do yeah. think there's another thing that comes to mind for me though. There's um, there's certain subsections of fashion which I think are are starting to become like before the internet, it wasn't really possible for you to have like a a like defined type of of I guess wear. Yeah for for you know that that you just like wore for your life now i feel like people are kind of doing that yeah right there are people who are going to wear what's called urban wear for their entire lives yeah so it's like air jordans and or i don't know like eight you know h&m and then i don't know like baggy jeans or something like that or right like tight fitting jeans but you have these big you know these big air jordans or something or whatever right instead of associating those with brands which are more expensive you just like you just have a community that that essentially can help you find what you're looking for for whatever you're willing to pay right yeah and so i think that that cuts expenditures down tremendously yeah so um you know to to continue on the article has um they have like the average annual u.s consumer spending by category and i the first one i'm going to tell you i disagree with because i don't think it makes sense to lob 
to I don't know. So they have pictures in this. So it's like a little like graphic, and then you can like hover over and then it's stuff. But they have like a picture of a laptop, and they count that as they put that in housing. But I don't know if that. Uh, but the, yeah, so it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, so I'll just give you the I'll give you the numbers and then tell you some of the items. So uh, the biggest expense is housing. Thirty three percent of spending in twenty sixteen around nineteen thousand dollars, and that includes mortgage, taxes, utilities, furnishing. Also covers vacation, lodging, phones, computers, and internet service. I totally disagree with having phones, computers, in like in a housing expense. But so there's that. Um, Honestly, there should probably be a separate electronics category. There should. Yeah, I completely agree. But you know, even even so, whatever. You know, it's just still interesting. So um, pension uh, or personal insurance and pensions is uh, it's almost seven thousand dollars, twelve percent of spending, which is, includes life life insurance, pension, social security, blah 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 um next these these aren't in order i'm just going like by graphic order um so uh 3.6 percent around two thousand dollars is cash contributions so child support uh money sent to college students charitable contributions entertainment was three thousand dollars 5.1 percent of spending includes everything from cameras tvs and music to fitness or whatever so i would add i would i would probably double the entertainment to like 10 percent add computers and phones in there Sure. Although they are, I mean, they are for work as well, but I would maybe have like an appliances and devices. I think that's, yeah, I think that's what the the housing one is supposed to be. But hmm. anyway, okay. So food was a uh, $7,000, 12.6%. That's fine. Uh, transportation. This one I, I think might surprise you. So transportation was $9,000, 16%. So that includes like your driver's license, insurance, parking tickets, uh, car rentals, airline tickets. That's really high. high. That's yeah, like a that's new a car every year. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine if we got rid of cars then you would have fewer expenses for that. Miscellaneous was one point seven thousand uh, dollars. healthcare was only eight percent. So we on average Americans pay more for transportation than they do healthcare. I mean Which I guess might be a good thing, but i I think it's kinda of indicative of transportation being kinda of costly. Well, they pay almost as much for entertainment as they do healthcare. That healthcare number is really low. Are you not surprised by how low that is? Yeah, yeah, I am. But so it includes, um, like, going to the doctor, getting contacts, like getting cough drops, thermometers, that kind of stuff. Eight percent, four thousand six hundred. Um, reading, <laughs> one hundred eighteen dollars point two percent. So it's like newspapers, books, um, education is two point three percent. And uh, apparel and services is only 3% now, so $1,800. So on average, Trevor, you spend $1,800 a year on clothes. On average, I don't spend $180 on clothes a year. Really? I do easily. I mean, actually, so... I mean, yeah, I don't I, buy I, new stuff, but it's like... Yeah, I don't spend that, and I bought a pair of jeans that are like 80 Yeah. I guess I, I don't know if I do either. I mean, I got this. I'm wearing this hoodie. I just got this, but this is the first piece of clothing, uh, like the first piece of actual clothing I've bought other than jeans and forever like everything else i have i've just had like nothing's yeah even i even have clothes that like have holes in them like i have a sweater that like the elbows kind of worn out but i just roll the sleeves up so you can't tell yeah but, i mean i would like i can afford a new shirt i just don't want to buy a new shirt yeah so. i get that and i don't spend much on clothing either yeah so um but i yeah i thought uh i thought that was uh you know a, a kind of interesting story because you see the change in um, you know, so one, one good thing that's come out of, uh, come out of Silicon Valley in general is that the casual, like the casual workplace, it's pretty much dominated like Google and companies like that, like made that a thing. And then now these other companies want to compete for talent and I'm using air quotes here cause they don't really compete and they don't look for talent, but, uh, they want to compete for talent. So they're like, Oh, we'll have a casual workplace. So yeah, that's, that's, if nothing else, Google has done that for us. So. Yeah. I, I do agree. That is one of the better things to come out of the Valley. Yeah. So, cause like, you know, as, as engineers, like it's great just wearing jeans every day. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't see, I don't like, I like wearing suits. I just don't see the point. You know what though? There, there are some other aspects of the culture I wish they would bring over. Like, you know, allowing people to use whatever device they want. Yeah. Which we talked about before, uh, but, uh, yeah. So I thought that was kind of a, a fun a fun discussion. I get I guess we don't really have anything to argue about. Um, they do they did mention on the article though that um, they believe that retailers are losing uh, losing ground to uh, social media celebrities. What does that mean? So people who um, like 
if you're a uh, like but so before like the brand like if you're Abercrombie you're like hey like here's an Abercrombie person like we we set them up and stuff but now if like you know you have your own YouTube show or whatever like you wear like if you wear a certain clothes maybe like the advertisers are like hey here's a free shirt like a really nice shirt or whatever but like if you wear those clothes then you're like you know people are following you and they're like oh like so and so looks really good in those clothes like maybe I should buy them so it's less about the brand and it's more about the uh, it's more about like the person that they look up to i guess yeah i get that so. although i i do think the the trend of like these these social media celebrities is kind of dumb yeah but then again i think celebrities in general are kind of dumb yeah i don't see the point in, like follow them like i just i just decide what i think looks good like i i go try like i go try clothes on or whatever i will uh, the other thing uh they they were like they try to place blame on amazon like oh I am, it's amazon's fault which i think is just a general yeah, it's pretty. It's like a catch-all for whatever. But I thought that was really stupid because I haven't bought. I've never bought clothes from Amazon. Well, I bought a ton I, of stuff from I, Amazon. I've bought. Um, I think I've bought Clark's Desert Boots from Amazon. But it's like, I've never bought clothes. Like I've never shopped for clothes on Amazon. It's been like, okay, I already know I want to buy that, and they happen to sell it, and like I've tried it on in the store. Because like I would never just buy clothes haphazardly from amazon because i have no idea how they fit i i have but the thing is typically with clothes you can return them for no pro- well like if if it's if it's an amazon provided item you can return it no cost can you return it to the store i think you can oh at the amazon store yeah you no, can. no i mean can you like if i bought a sh- so one thing that's kind of if i don't think they do this but like let's say you bought a shirt from target i think you could return this sh- like from sh- from target on amazon i think you could return that to uh to the actual physical target store because we did this with a hat so uh, my girlfriend bought me a hat like a you know like a winter hat and i didn't really like it that much but i like this other one from the same same store and instead of returning on the amazon we just took it over the store and the guy was like yeah like you just saved me money instead of like having to deal with the shipping and and all this stuff so yeah. he was happy to exchange it makes sense but so yeah well that's um that's pretty much all i had the, i will say the one thing that has not gone out of fashion and probably never will go out of fashion are jeans blue jeans are the best everybody should wear them yep real jeans though yeah yeah you gotta get actual real jeans so right. well that's all i have trevor yep me too i think that's uh that's it for columbus this week thanks everybody for joining us